Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I think it has been long since we spoke, and now I am going to start with the macroeconomics, and we start right from chapter one. So let me start by showing you your prescribed textbook so that you all uh, buy the prescribed textbook, and then um, you can even go to the library to find the copy because we have some copies in the library so that you are able to start the, using the prescribed book. Right. We start from chapter one where we really want to understand what is macroeconomics and why macroeconomics. Right. This is an intermediate course. So we are building from your first year work. And um, what we are going to do now is I will just say this is about macro economics and it's not about micro as we did uh, previously so what is happening here is that we are um, going to check the macroeconomic problems and when we talk about the macroeconomic problems we are talking mainly about inflation and unemployment right these are the two main macroeconomic um, uh, 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 problems so we can add this to say and low growth like when the economy is growing very slow as well then is a problem to uh, the government so therefore it means what? It means that now in macroeconomics, there are some certain objectives that we are trying to sort of achieve. And what are those objectives that we are trying to achieve? Now, I will start by indicating to you that we have the macroeconomic objectives. We have the macroeconomic objectives. And the first one is that of economic growth. So we have economic growth. That means that economy must grow. That is what um, the government is there to ensure that the economy is growing. And then the second one is that we must have high employment. And then, and then, and then other books will refer to it as full employment and so on and so on. Or other books may even refer to it as low unemployment. Right. And then the third one is price stability. And then now with the price stability, we are saying that inflation must be very low. And then number four is the balance of payment equilibrium equilibrium and then the last one here is going to be the equity let me just say equity but mainly you will find that in your textbook referred to as equitable distribution of income I just, I just use equity for now. But now the question is, obviously, if we have this as the objectives to be achieved by the state, there must be some form of um, statistic that is used to measure each of this. So because we must be able to see whether the economy is growing or the economy is not growing. So how do we see that? So therefore, we have the objectives. And then on the other side now, we will have the indicators and, and 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 this is exactly what economists are doing because they must be looking at some sort of indicators they must look at some uh, form of statistics to tell them that economy is growing or economy is not growing so what is happening here is we are saying that for us to know whether economy is growing or not we're going to look at real gdp but now the question is, how are we going to see whether the employment is going up or down? Then we will look at 
unemployment rate. And then there's price stability. We're going to look at inflation rate. And then balance of payment equilibrium. We're going to look at exchange rate. And then equitable distribution of income. We're going to look at Gini coefficient. You know, like the one that we calculated from Lawrence Kemp, as we did at first year level. So now we have objectives and we have indicators. Now, we have to understand how are we going to sort of achieve these um, uh, 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 objectives of macroeconomy. Now, we, going to, we are going to achieve this objective of macroeconomy by making use of some form of um, uh, 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 policies. So now, the government is going to make use of some policies and, 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 and I have to be straight to the point to say no and these policies will come back to them over and over again and uh, this is what is going to happen the first one is going to be a, a, a fiscal policy and this one is about this one is about what? It's about um, uh, 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 um, the government policies. So mainly, when you talk about fiscal policy, what must come to your mind is taxation and government expenditure. And, 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 and really, when you combine these two, it is commonly known as budget. And you will see when you get to fiscal policy, the budget. Basically, when the minister is talking about the budget speech, he's just talking about the taxation and government expenditure. Now, the second um, macroeconomic policy is monetary policy. And, 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 and this one now, we are talking about the policies of the South African Reserve Bank. So, Mostly, we are going to be talking about interest rates and money supply. So, guys, you must be able to understand that every time when I talk about fiscal policy, I'm talking about government expenditure and government spending. But every time when I am talking about um, um, uh, uh, monetary policy, now I'm talking about the interest rates and money supply. So, this is what you need to understand. And, 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 and I must be very clear with that because... Many people really don't want to understand that um, when you talk about monetary policy, you don't talk about taxes and the stuff. We are just talking about what? Interest rate. And what is the interest rate? Interest rate is the price of money. So you need to get that clear. And I hope that um, everything is really getting, you know, you know, you know, um, straight forward. Now, let me start with the fiscal policy and see that how this government now achieve the objective of the first objective using um, a fiscal policy. Now, government expenditure increases and obviously when the government expenditure increases, then total expenditure in the economy is going to increase. And if total expenditure is increasing in the economy, it forces total production to increase as well. Therefore, ultimately, the output, which is the real GDP, I just put Y here for real GDP, is also going to increase. And when the output increases, we say the economy is increasing. That is exactly what we are doing. So therefore, you can see that now, when Y goes up, which is the output, it means that now we are producing more Therefore, in this case, now we can see that employment will also increase. Why? Because we are producing more. We must use more factors of production. So, by this one now, already we achieved two objectives. The first one is what? The first one is 
output increasing, that is economic growth. The second one is employment increasing, that is um, uh, 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 high employment in the economy. But the problem now is that when all these are increasing because of this garbage baby now, the problem is that when people are buying too much in the economy, the prices are also increasing. And, and you will know that if the prices in the economy are increasing, we are sitting with a serious problem. And what is the name of that problem? The name of that problem now is that when the prices are increasing, we are experiencing inflation. Therefore, what does this mean now? This means that every time when we are sitting with what? With um, uh, 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 government expenditure going up, yes, the economy is going to grow. Yes, the employment is going to grow. But when the prices are going up, it's not good news. So therefore, therefore it means what? It means we have what? Conflict. Between what? Between growth and inflation. We have conflict between what? Employment and inflation. So now I believe that people are able to understand this and now it makes more sense. And then, then really, this is what people really need to understand. Because you will see that um, this course, will, we will keep on coming back to this. So I want you to read through and, and try to understand, but... That is exactly what uh, the whole text is trying to teach you. To say, we have five macroeconomic objectives. And, and, and with regard to these five macroeconomic objectives, for each objective, we must have an indicator. But now the question is, uh, how do we achieve this objective? Now we can make use of fiscal policy where the government increases their spending. But when the government spending increases, the tax will also then the total expenditure will also increase, and then the total spending will increase, and then and then and then total production will increase, and then the output will also increase. But now let's now come and see how they use monetary policy. So in this case, now what the government will do is they will increase money supply. And you can see that when money supply increases, there's too much money in the economy, therefore the price of money will go down. But what's the price of money? The interest rate will go down and then when the price of money goes down therefore there will be a lot of real investments going up because now the firms will access money easily now they can take that money or borrow that money and pay for the production machines uh, uh, buildings and land and all this and then as a result now total expenditure is going to increase and then and then and then income is going to increase so now we can see how monetary, monetary policy also is using that but now when the income or output is increasing we have already indicated that this income or output increasing it means what it means that the economy is growing what do you mean the economy is growing it means output in the economy is increasing production and the economy is increasing but the more production we know that now it must be complemented by what by increase in employment so now you have already achieved the two but now you must remember that this takes us back to the conflict. Because if there is too much production, many people are getting income, many people are buying, then the prices will go up. And then ultimately, we see this conflict again. So this, I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will definitely come back to this one. Um, uh, 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 I would like to end this first lesson here and I want you to sort of repeat it over and over again. I will now, in the next lecture, uh, talk about how do we calculate each of this. But for now, let us call it a day. And then, and then goodbye for now. Thank you very much. Thank you.